we do a discovery stage to discover, which sounds really trite, I know, but it's very important because it's really easy for teams to come in thinking that they probably know what the answer is already and just wanting to validate that, and you don't want to do that. We are too close to technology and we are too close to government to actually really know the problem and the solution particularly well, so we need to go out and really understand things from the end user's point of view, go out in the field, meet them, see what it's like to be them, really understand their experience. You'll come back seeing the problem completely differently uh, and that's what discovery is all about. In the discovery stage, we go out and we observe people. We go out to ideally where they are doing the thing that we're going to be improving for them and we understand what their experience of that is right now. And we look at all of the stuff, not just the stuff that is we might think is immediately in scope for us, but stuff that they're doing with other people, other departments, uh, and kind of mapping that whole process and really identifying where the pain points are. Um, and that tells us what we can do next. So it's, a, it's ideally a, a bunch of contextual research. It's definitely not briefing an agency or a research team to go out and bring you back a report. It's a team sport. Everybody in the team needs to be going out, seeing this for themselves and building that empathy with end users. You'll also be doing things like understanding the technical environment and understanding the political legislative environment, all of that kind of thing. In the scheme of things, that's easy making sure that the team really understands what the problem and the, and the possibilities are and, and framing that around the, you know, the people who will be impacted by the changes that you make. That's the important thing. What comes out of a discovery stage is empathy and a way of focusing the team on designing something that meets user needs. So there are a lot of different ways that you could do this. Common ways that I've seen that work really well are people finding ways of, of concisely describing what the user need is uh, and maybe putting that little poster or making actually a poster of particular people that you've met and describing the problems that they're having that you need to solve. Journey mapping is another thing that people use really often. So creating maps of the entire ecosystem and the process that people go through. It's amazing how making a map that follows a person's experience through a service a lot of the time reveals government to itself in a way that it hasn't seen before. So that can be a really powerful thing to do for your team and also for other parts of government as well. Um, so they're common things that you get out. Some people do personas, but generally we find that the teams who really do use the research as a team sport don't tend to need them because they already have connections to individual users that they've seen from research anyway. You'll also get like maps of technical landscape, maps of kind of policy and legislative stuff, legislative stuff that you need to understand. Um, uh, but a again, you know, the, I'll, uh, another thing that's really useful is our, our map of the actual business process that happens inside government as well. How does this work get processed inside government? A lot of the time that's where big, big opportunities for improvements are that are reasonably simple. Um, but the main thing out of all of this is really um, empathy and, and a proper human-centered understanding of the problem that you're about to solve.